Once we've trained a neural network, it's usually trivial to use it on data to obtain, say, object classifications. However, object detection is a bit special in this sense and actually requires a few tricks in order to perform well. Let's have a look. The basic problem, if we use a single shot detector in a naive manner, is that we obtain too many bounding boxes. The neural network that we have trained would output one vector y for every Anki box, and therefore one bounding box for every Anki box. The standard procedure is to then remove all bounding boxes, for which the network has told us that the probability that it's an object is smaller than 0.5. Once we've done that, we're often left with several bounding boxes for each object in the image. For instance, as you can see, we've produced three bounding boxes for the person in the middle of the image to the right. To understand why this happens, please recall that we often have, say, a 19 by 19 grid. Among all of these grids, there are many anchor boxes that overlap considerably with this person. And it may not be surprising that for several of the anchor boxes, we report that the person should be associated to the anchor box. The most commonly used solution to this problem is to use something called non-maximum suppression. This algorithm actually starts by removing bounding boxes for which the probability that there is an object is smaller than 0.5. The red rectangles in the figure illustrate a possible set of bounding boxes that we may be left with after this step. We then identify the bounding box and classification with the largest probability of being an object, and we immediately store that to the set of object detections. We here refer to this as bounding box I, and we have illustrated that bounding box in black. After that, we identify all bounding boxes that satisfy two criteria. First, that the most probable class is the same as for bounding box I. Second, that the bounding box overlaps substantially with bounding box I, where we use intersection over union to measure the overlap. We have marked the bounding boxes that satisfy both criteria in blue. The other bounding boxes are either likely to be a bike or the overlap with the black bounding box is too small. The blue bounding boxes are then removed. We then repeat step two and three until there are no red bounding boxes left. Of course, when we return to step two, we look for the bounding box with the largest chance of being an object among all the remaining bounding boxes, that is, among all of the bounding boxes that are still marked in red. If we repeat this procedure in this example, we obtain the object detections illustrated in black. Let us end with a brief summary. We have studied object detection using deep neural networks. In particular, we have looked at single-shot detectors and learned about how they work during both training and testing. The objective in object detection is to produce a classification and a bounding box for every object visible in the input data. The single-shot detectors are not only useful for images, but can also be used to detect objects in LiDAR data, in images from stereo cameras, and so on. One reason for presenting object detectors in this course is that they can be combined with the multi-object tracking algorithms that we've learned about earlier. With this, we conclude the videos about deep learning.